Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, one past the hour, so we will kick off. I'm Alex Hadding and I'm the Chief People Officer for Employment Heroes. So my role here is to oversee the entire life cycle of our employees' journeys at Employment Hero. And I'm thrilled to have you joining me today to talk about a topic that I personally am really passionate about, and that's one-on-ones and the way I've seen things evolve with us at Employment Hero moving to 100% remote um, has really been quite mind-blowing in terms of learning how to have effective one-on-ones, um, how to make sure they are impactful and how to make sure you get that cadence across your organisation. So today we're going to touch on one-on-ones, why are they so important, what approach should you take and what does it look like in this hybrid and distributed world? Or are you a remote first organisation like us? And how to create an effective and meaningful feedback culture. And then at the end, we'll field some Q&As. So please put your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, and uh, all these slides will be sent out to everybody following uh, today's recording, probably tomorrow. So I'd love to start with a poll. I'd love to know, do you have regular one-on-ones with your direct reports on a weekly basis or with your own manager? I'll leave that open for a couple of seconds. I'm intrigued to see how many people are doing this on a regular basis or not. Okay, hopefully we can show the results now. I've got the fabulous Sophia from our marketing team in the background running the poll. So yes, look, we've got 37% weekly, 21% fortnightly, 24% monthly and 19% not at all. So let's dive into all the rest of the presentation. Why are one-on-ones so important? So what I wanted to start with was how quickly our management philosophy changed due to the pandemic and COVID. It took an entire decade for us to go from the old industrial corporation approach to hierarchical leadership. Then we took another decade to get to collaborative management and then even more than that to get to company as a network. COVID hit and it only took us a year to shift where our focus is now on empathy, trust, resilience and growth. So it's all about the individual in your organisation, the community giving back, as well as people's families. And this is where one-on-ones really do play into it. So it's all about communication. You want to create a safe communication space for your employees. That also touches on psychological safety. I'll talk about that a bit later. It provides an opportunity to build relationships, idea sharing. I mean, as a manager, I learn as much as from my team as what I hope they learn from me. And, and putting an idea out there and brainstorming, if you're so deep in the detail, you can really get great input through a one-on-one. -on -one. It's also about listening and asking for feedback if you are a manager from your employees. So according to Gallup, Regularly scheduled meetings with a manager are critical to engagement. Now, we all know from many studies that if your employees are engaged, they're more productive and it absolutely hits your bottom line in terms of being more profitable and more productive. On average, only 15% of employees who work for a manager who does not meet with them regularly are engaged. Now, if you flip that, managers that meet with their employees regularly tripled that level of engagement, which is a huge statistic. So what's the approach and what should it achieve? So a one-on-one -on -one is a scheduled meeting in your calendar and your mental mind map for open-ended and anticipated conversations between a manager and an employee. They're not like status reports or tactical meetings or things you can do asynchronously. It's also a place for coaching, for mentorship. You might be giving the employee context around a bigger business objective and even allowing them to vent. Everyone has tough weeks and tough days. People have lives outside of work. So it's really important to be checking in on people. 
it goes way beyond just having an open door policy or having an employee have the ability to walk up to you at your desk or now in remote uh, to be pinging you on Slack or Teams through Microsoft. It really dedicates on a regular cadence time for managers and their employees to connect and to communicate. So part one, I would define as the check-in. So you want to begin your one-on-one -on -one with open-ended questions that are about your employee, not you. Remember, this is their time, so focus on them. You might want to start by asking how they're feeling, what's on their mind, do they have any roadblocks, and how can I help? And sometimes you have to be patient because if someone's not feeling great, it might not be work and it might not be that they've got roadblocks. They might have some other things going on in their life. So it's really important that you listen. And if you don't have the skills to be giving them the right advice, make sure you give them an EAP, Employee Assistance Program, to work reach out to, or there are a lot of free resources around Beyond Blue and others for counselling. The most important thing is that you listen. So really focus on what your employee is saying. A really vital part is to make sure your employees feel heard, safe and empowered during their one-on-ones. You don't want them fearing, oh my gosh, I've got a one-on-one -on -one coming up with Alex. I'm nervous, I'm anxious. You want it to be a really safe place where you are going to connect. And then as a manager, your next role after checking in is to facilitate solutions. So you wanna uncover what are your employees excited about? How can you mentor them to be successful and unblock them to do their absolute best work? So to create a space of trust, confirm their points first. Quite often we might misinterpret what they're saying. Uh, I also find one-on-ones now in a remote world of work a lot more personal because you don't have a desk between you and you need to make sure you shut off your Slack or your Teams notifications and you are 100% present for that one-on-one. -on -one. Do not be multitasking. It's very obvious even over a video call. And sometimes you need to disclose your own weaknesses, places where you've stumbled in the past. Now, as a manager, this sounds really hard because it means being vulnerable. However, in being vulnerable, you're sharing with your employee if they are going through a tough stage that you've been there before in your career and you've gotten through it. And it might be something as simple as with a one-on-one -on -one with Sophia, I kind of say, you know what, Sophia, back in my career day, I missed a couple of deadlines, could have shot myself. What did I learn from that? I learned to use my calendar a lot more effectively. So helping to coach them through how they can get over what they might be feeling they haven't delivered on. Always be on their side, especially if you're giving them pretty direct feedback or candid feedback. Make sure that you are giving them opportunities for growth. So if you're giving them feedback, tell them it's because you want them to go further in their career. And it's not just because you're being an a-hole. You're actually giving them the feedback for a reason. And again, you might want to be vulnerable and say, Alex, I've got some direct feedback to give you. And I don't want you to take this personally. Back in my career, when I first got very upfront, direct, candid feedback, I got really upset personally because I didn't know what to do with it or how to take it. And so if someone does get emotional, you can always feel free to, to kind of side that feedback and say, look, Alex, we'll give you a call tomorrow to talk about it. Why don't you kind of think about it overnight and then try and put it in writing so that they can have a think about it. And respect them as a performer, uh, sorry, as a person, not just a performer of tasks. So you want to make sure you're not just ticking boxes during a one-on-one. -on -one. It is their time. It's not about um, sharing a report. That's what OKRs are for or status updates or asynchronous communication or Trello, for example, if you're using that as your project management board. Now, what if you don't? manage someone? How do you leverage this one-on-one -on -one as an employee? So keep in mind, it's your time to express to your manager what's on your mind. Don't use it unwisely. You might want to brainstorm ideas. You might, 
might want to communicate where you want to go in your future with your career. So use the time wisely. Set aside time prior to organize which topics you'd like to discuss or even have an ongoing document where you note things down during the week that crop up. Oh, I heard this in an all hands and I didn't really understand the context around it. Could you explain as an example? And look, if you're feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, if you're being blocked by another team or another function, think about why you feel this way. And again, write it down so that you don't forget to bring it up with your manager in that safe space. Remain open to discussing what's really going on and where you need your manager's support. Again, allow yourself to be vulnerable. Is there something going on in your personal life where you do need another team member to step in and help you out with a couple of projects because one of your children are not well and you're caring for them at home, for example? And put it in layman's terms. Remember, as managers, we can't read your mind. So don't try and brush over things, just say it like it is. And if you want to reiterate it, make sure you slack your manager afterwards to reiterate perhaps what you are wanting. Are you wanting to get some management experience? So discuss things in specifics, or is there a project that's being worked on within your team and you're not feeling involved enough? And how can you take on some more ownership and accountability. So a general guide to one-on-ones to reiterate, set aside regular time, a regular cadence. Go in prepared. So make sure that you have some kind of template that your employee completes prior to the one-on-one that you can have a review of. And then what I do also on a Monday morning, I have time put aside in my calendar to go and review all of my one-on-one archived templates from the week prior, because there is absolutely things I've dropped the ball on from a you know, the end of the week getting crazy busy, follow-ups I haven't done. And so I spend that Monday morning going through those one-on-ones. Kate has a roadblock here, so I need to help her out. Um, I didn't recognize Jenny enough for achieving this goal. And those things are within the one-on-one template. So it gives you that opportunity to start your week by revisiting. What is it your team's done great? Where do they need your help? And potentially, where can you give better feedback to someone who may be needing it? So take a moment to check in and reflect on how you're doing. Engage. It really is the most effective way to create those one-on-one relationships with your team members. The same, if you're not a manager, it's a really great way to engage with your own manager and develop that relationship. Again, facilitate solutions. Don't be the solution giver. Well, if I was you, Sophia, here's what I would do. You want to take a step back. You want to have your employee own the solution themselves. So, Sophia, let's brainstorm about why you're having this roadblock. How do you think you could get through it? And where can I help you? Then Sophia owns the solution because she's come up with it herself. So you're helping facilitate through coaching. You're not just right out there going, this is how I would do it. Because we all work differently and we need to help our employees grow and we need to empower them to grow and make them feel confident as they grow throughout their own career. And look forward, not backwards. So set goals for the coming week, month or quarter. Look backwards slightly in terms of what do you feel most proud of in the last week, which is a question I ask during my one-on-ones, but then also focus on what's going to happen in the following week. What are you excited about? What are your main priorities? It's a really good forum to have those conversations. So how do we do it? at Employment Hero, we actually use Employment Hero and we have a one-on-one template where you can create a one-on-one for your direct report on a weekly basis. You can schedule it to happen at the same time every week, a Tuesday at 2 p.m., for example. And then we have templates that we can use or a manager can use their own questions. A great example here is I start off by asking my employees, how would you rate your happiness between zero to 10? It gives me a really good opening conversation to look at someone and say, oh my goodness, you're usually a 10 and today you're a five. What is going on? 
talk to me and just opening up that door. Um, again, sometimes you'll need to be vulnerable and say, I'm having a really bad week too. Is it personal, professional? Is it a combination of the two? So it's really great to be able to set up these um, because then they're archived, they're confidential between just you and the person that you're doing the one-on-one -on -one with, which brings me to skip one-on-ones. It's a really great idea to set up skip one-on-ones with people that don't report directly to you and your team contingent on how big your team is. You might want to do that monthly, quarterly or biannually and set up that template where you can have that conversation with someone one or two levels down to, to get to know them, to make them feel great and engaged and also to get feedback for their manager. It's, it's a really great forum to do that. Now, if you don't have Employment Hero or an HRIS system, you can create a shared Google Doc or a Microsoft Doc between the two of you where you set out the questions and it just repeats every week so that it's an easy place to take notes. Again, as a manager, you can look at it before you have your one-on-one -on -one, rather than relying on note-taking or having your employees take notes in a notebook uh, during the week. For example, I go to my one-on-one -on -one template with Ben our founder and CEO, and I take notes throughout the week of things I need to bring up with him, bring to his attention, projects I'm working on or my team are working on. Now, how do we deal with one-on-ones in this hybrid and distributed workforce that we're working in? And for some of us, like Employment Hero, we've gone 100% remote. So mix it up a little. So you've got your cadence of your weekly one-on-ones, but not every one-on-one -on -one needs to be the same. You might do a monthly coaching session. You might have one dedicated to setting your quarterly OKRs. You do want to do a quarterly review of projects. That doesn't have to be during a one-on-one. -on -one. It could be by team where you do a retrospective on the OKRs from the prior quarter. Definitely recommend having a one-on-one -on -one dedicated at least a quarter to talk about career development and building skills. I have career development as a question every single week for my employees. Sometimes we don't touch on it, other times we do. And if you need to cancel a one-on-one, -on -one, things always crop up. You need to reschedule at the same time and let your employee know exactly why you're rescheduling. Perfect example, this webinar crossed over with a one-on-one -on -one with my, one of my team members. And so I rescheduled it um, and let him know that I was having to reschedule it because I had an external webinar. Because you don't want an employee to feel that they are less important than something else that's in your calendar. You just need to let them know why you're rescheduling it so they do feel that it is important part of your schedule as a manager. They don't all have to be on video. Um, it's great to say, you know what, I'm kind of, I've spoken to you every day this week or I've seen you on Slack every day and we've been going back and forth. I'm completely on top of what you're doing. You've filled out your template. I'll grab my mobile, you grab yours, let's go for a walk. And, or a walk together if you're in the same location. You'll be really surprised at how it mixes up the conversation when you're walking rather than focused on a screen or a checklist or a template. It can be really, really terrific. Also, you could meet for coffee and that doesn't have to be in the office. It could be in an open space cafe, especially with um, what's going on in Australia with COVID and around the world with, with uh, cases spiking and people not being comfortable going into the office. Know the tools to use and when. And you can always do a team building activity together too during your one-on-one. -on -one. You might randomly slip over some personal questions that you want to know and then ask the employee to do the same to you, to ask questions of you as a manager. Let's use this session to get to know each other better. What do you love doing outside of work? Um, what's your go-to on weekends, etc. And transparency is key. So if an employee asks you a tough question about the business, be transparent with them. Um, and that might be as much as, you know, we're not sure or I don't have the answer. But just being transparent with them means that they feel really psychologically safe with you and that you are being honest with them. 
Uh, and it's also an opportunity, again, to build relationships and be um, productive for both the manager and the individual, especially if something's not working. Pause, review and change, as always. Nothing can stay the same. So creating an effective feedback culture is really important. There's been a lot of press and coverage around this Harvard Business Review. You've got um, Kim Scott, who's written an amazing book about candid feedback, uh, Patty McCord from Netflix, uh, a wonderful book called Powerful, and they're all about feedback in the moment. So let's take a step back. Why give feedback? Because it's all about engagement and it's also a key ingredient to any individual success. If you think about your career and you've never had feedback, would you be where you are today? And would you feel great about an excellent project? Especially if you've been given constructive feedback and then you work on coaching and you get to improve yourself, it's so satisfying when you are able to nail a skill that you're terrible at. I'm terrible at organizing my day and my week because there's so many different priorities I have. I get pinged all the time on Slack. So that's something I'm working on. And when I finally get there, hopefully it will feel like a very proud moment. Studies do show and extensive research that when it comes to engagement, those who receive meaningful feedback, good or bad, each week are four times more likely to be engaged. That's incredible. So any kind of feedback, they are four times more likely to be engaged. So during that one-on-one, -on -one, oh my gosh, feedback, Alex, on your presentation, that was fantastic. Let's take a step back though and think about what else could we have done and then put it back on the employees. So they're thinking about how they themselves could improve. Now, one thing I will say, um, and we're about to get to it, but that is when it comes to feedback, it needs to be in the moment and timely. So here's Patty McCord from Netflix. So the best feedback is in the moment or close to it rather than waiting months for a formal meeting or even waiting a week for a weekly one-on-one. -on -one. Because by that time, your employee doesn't necessarily remember the situation or what happened. And it's as simple as, Alex, let me know when you've got 10 minutes, want to jump on a Slack call to give you some feedback about the marketing meeting that we had earlier today. And that way, uh, make sure it's two-way communication. So on video, in the office or over coffee, especially if it's going to be quite candid feedback. So the art of giving feedback. So you've got two different types of feedback. You've got organic feedback that just happens um, during the day, which might be, Alex, I think you could improve your knowledge on this by speaking to Dave. You're simply diverting your employee to a subject matter expert so that if they're asking a question, they know who to go to. But then you've got more structured feedback that you really want to give in real time. Um, we have a feature in Employment Hero where you can capture it in a central place and it actually gets sent to the person. You can copy the manager or you can give the feedback to the manager and the employee doesn't see it. It's a really useful tool if you are working remotely and um, someone has done something in a meeting, for example, they're on another team and I might open up the feedback tool and I will ping Kevin. Oh, hey, Kevin, just wanted to let you know that um, Alex spoke over people, didn't listen in the meeting, that was cross-functional as a result. Um, you know, people seemed disengaged in the meeting. I think she's lost a little bit of her credibility. Let me know when you've got some time to chat. So pick the time and the medium. So there are certain types of feedback that you are best to give in a conversation that can be on a video and then you can capture it in a tool or even in an email following especially if the person or the um, employee is going to get emotional you absolutely want to follow up in writing which is um, after the meeting whether it's slack or an email Alex I understand that feedback may have been hard to hear it is coming from the right place and that is me trying to improve you and your skills and success in your particular role. Let me know when you've got some time to talk about it and then just bullet point the feedback that you are giving. 
So I love the tool of SBI when it comes to giving feedback because you can take a step back and you think about the observed behaviours rather than it being something that could be perceived as personal or subjective. So this is all about the situation. You describe the situation you were in, the behaviour of the particular individual, and what was the impact of that behaviour? So to give you an example of positive feedback, the situation might be, Alex, at the client meeting earlier today, behaviour, you balanced sharing our ideas with hearing from them and asking for their feedback. And the impact was that the client told me that they thought we clearly understood their needs. Fantastic job. Keep it up and thank you. You're reinforcing a great behavior through using the SBI model. To do a flip on that for something where you want to give candid feedback. Alex, we were in a meeting today and you presented your proposal to our client. You presented everything succinctly. However, I observed that you did not listen to the client when they interjected. You actually spoke over their comments and you didn't even acknowledge their concerns. Did you notice the impact of you doing this? I certainly observed it. Our clients shook their heads, which really showed that they were not happy, meaning they didn't walk away with a good experience. And the ultimate impact of that behaviour was that we didn't close the deal. And so you're showing your employee through observed behaviours what they've done and how it has impacted that particular situation. Now, you've also got interpersonal or peer feedback, which can be really uncomfortable to give, especially if you're at the same level of someone. However, you're doing someone a disservice if you don't, as a teammate and a peer, give them feedback if you observe something that they should be getting feedback on. So with this, again, you use the SBI model. At the meeting today, we discussed your project, Scott. You interrupted teammates as they shared their ideas. And as a result, the rest of the team just stopped contributing. I think they felt disengaged. Did you notice this? And by asking that question at the end, you're drawing your peer in to kind of say, think back to the situation, think back to how you behaved, and did you notice the impact of your behaviour? Now, when it comes to peers, you should always follow up with what you need or what you want. So why are you giving them this feedback? Um, Scott, I'm giving you this feedback because I need you to wait and listen in these team meetings because they're not as effective when you're interrupting people all the time. Let's talk about some tools and some ways that you might manage that. Um, with some employees that I've given that feedback to, I've asked them to put a post-it note on their computer, being remote first, most of our meetings are virtual. And it is literally a post-it note that says, listen, breathe, slow. And it's just that constant reminder that is visually sitting in front of them. Another one is, Scott, I want you to consider when to back down or drop an issue. So if someone is always harping on an issue and it's really impacting your leadership meetings, for example, let them know that they need to drop something or take a step back in order for your team meetings to be more effective and for them to be respected by their peers. So how do you prepare for giving feedback based on the SBI model? So think about what your intention is. Is it to help them uh, improve and grow in their career? Hopefully, yes. And what would a successful outcome look like? Again, what, what are you wanting or needing from giving this feedback? And then think about the situation, the behaviour. So what did the person do? And then the impact of their behaviour on others. Now, then go back to what information do you have that's going to support the feedback that you're going to give? Now, if you anticipate an emotional response, think about how you're going to respond. You could get tears. In this world of videoing, someone could just log off. So how do you follow up 
with that and how do you make sure you're supporting the person? Quite often, my advice for managers who might be giving feedback with someone who could get emotional is to stop there because you're not going to get through to them if they're crying and they're emotional and it's best to say, Alex, this is obviously um, a bit of a surprise to you. So let's reschedule tomorrow. Have a think about this feedback tonight and we'll talk in more detail about action planning and going forward when your head is in a better space. So give them that psychological safety that they have the right to be upset, but you're trying to help them improve. So you're, you're not going to drop it. You're going to come back to it the next day. And um, when you are preparing, do you give the feedback verbally, video, in person, over coffee? or simply through a feedback tool. That's an easy one. You use a feedback tool, email, Slack, or Teams, if it's going to be positive feedback. Um, Sophia, you did a fantastic job with the webinar and all of the content. Thank you so much. And then that's an easy feedback and recognition. Now, if it's going to be a little bit, um, not brutal, but a little bit more candid, um, uh, you know, Alex, you went way too quickly through that presentation you lost people, you didn't take a breath, you didn't ask questions, you didn't allow time for Q&A, that feedback needs to be two-way and needs to be in, not in person, but over video uh, and not even over the phone. So how do we do it at Employment Hero? So for that positive feedback, or if you want to give a manager feedback about someone uh, and not give it directly to the employee, we have a feedback tool where we um, say who the feedback is for, then do you want to share it with the individual and the manager or just the manager? And it might be, um, you know, great presentation. Here is what I think is so good. It would be great if you could take the team through how you prepare for a presentation and how you make sure you're telling a great story press send and then it goes to the manager or the employee. Again, I gave an example before where you might use this tool to give someone's manager a heads up that someone's behaviour needs addressing uh, in terms of, you know, I'm running on the fly and I want to capture this straight away, just got out of a marketing meeting, cross-functional, um, you know, Linda didn't behave well, so I just wanted to give you a heads up, let me know when you've got time for me to give you some context around situation behaviour impact so that you can give that feedback to her directly or are you happy for me to give that feedback directly to your team member? So if you are of that percentage where you're not having regular one-on-ones, how can you introduce and implement a really strong cadence? So do it and make it transparent to everyone in the organization. We talk about it during induction so that we empower employees. If they don't have a one-on-one -on -one weekly set up with their managers, they can go and schedule it themselves. We empower them and say, if in a week your manager hasn't gotten around to it, they might be busy, pick a time, put it in as a recurring meeting and off you go. You're giving them permission and empowerment to book it in themselves and honestly, Quite often, it is simply that the manager has lacked time and been time poor. Hold your managers accountable for this cadence. So we have a reporting tool where I can actually see um, from a high level how many of our managers are actually having one-on-ones on a regular basis with their employees. It's confidential, so I don't have any access to the actual template or the document of what they're talking about, but it just reads out the percent of managers that are and aren't doing it. So hold them account accountable, make it part of their KPIs or their OKRs. And give your managers a call to action. So if they're kind of saying, I'm time poor and I ca absolutely cannot have one-on-ones with all of my direct reports, create a burning platform. Take them through the Gallup statistics. Take them through the statistics of someone being four times more engaged if they get feedback on a weekly basis, whether it's constructive or positive. It's really important to create that burning platform so they understand the why behind having regular one-on-ones. They understand the impact it will have and they will see that then they're across their employees' work and projects. They're helping remove roadblocks. They're creating relationships and rapport 
and psychological safety. There are just so many positives. So what can you take away from today's session? Do you have one-on-ones already in the organisation? If not, we can discuss it in the Q&A, but what are some of the ways you've learned that you can introduce them? We'll also send additional resources to get you started, including this deck. So now I will move to Q&A and please feel free to raise a hand if you want to be unmuted. So Veronica, hi Veronica. Um, may I ask where the management over time came from, please? I have not heard of some of those transitions. Oh, um, yeah, so great question, Veronica. I was trying to think which slide you were um, referring to. So that was the first slide and that was from the Harvard Business Review. And that was talking about kind of the change throughout time of the way management has been approached and what philosophies across the world we have been utilizing. So going back to when COVID hit, as managers, we all and HR had to take a massive step back. And we really had to lead with empathy and vulnerability and putting people first. It was so important. The world was in upheaval. Who could have ever predicted that we were going to have a world pandemic? And everyone dealt with it differently. Um, you know, you had people with sick parents, um, isolated, people isolated at home, trying to homeschool and work full time. It, it, you know, it, it was just a, a disaster. And, and that's how that kind of came from. But Harvard Business Review was the source for that. Um, Okay, that one's done. Next one is anonymous. How can HR encourage managers to have regular one-on-ones with their team? What resources can HR provide for new managers or experienced managers who haven't conducted one-on-ones to conduct their one-on-ones? We have a platform for one-on-ones, however, managers aren't really using it. So first of all, hold them accountable. Make it a KPI that they have uh, one-on-ones with all of their direct reports at 100% achievement and it needs to be um, through a template and you can report out on it. And uh, you can also survey employees to ask who's having a one-on-one with their manager and empower your employees. If they're not having a one-on-one, they can book a regular one into their manager's calendar. In terms of creating a template, I would create a template um, that they can use and uh, send that out to them. It will make it so much easier. They will start to realize really quickly a pre-filled out template is going to make their life so much easier. It also helps spark things that you might be able to delegate that you didn't think you could. And as a manager, again, be vulnerable. Um, Garth, I'm having a bit of a, a challenge with this project and deliverable that I'm working on. Can we talk through what I'm grappling with? And, and you're not just being vulnerable, you're giving them an opportunity to contribute to something higher level in the organization. Angela, hey Angela, new to Employment Hero and loving it. Thank you. Quick question. With the one-on-one -on -one templates being sent out prior to their one-on-one -on -one discussion, does EH have this function? Yes. So essentially what happens is your employees can go into Employment Hero down to the coaching um, navigation bar. They click on one-on-ones and they will see their template come up. So for example, my one-on-one -on -one with Ben, our founder and CEO that I have weekly, that is sitting in that section of Employment Hero. I can access it at any time. So throughout the week, rather than taking notes in a notebook or somewhere else. I actually throw things in there during the week. Uh, if I'm having roadblocks, if there's something he needs to be aware of, do I need some advice on something? Um, what am I working on? What are my team's plans going forward, etc.? So they can access that all the time. The next one, can we use the one-on-one -on -one feature for team manager meetings? Oh, that's a great idea. Um, I will jot that down to um, 
Yeah, that's a really, really good idea. No, the functionality is not there. However, I will pass that feedback on to the product team. Um, we also are excitingly working on a career development template to go under that same section in Employment Hero to help facilitate those career discussions on a quarterly basis or monthly basis. Career discussions can be really hard um, to have if you've never done them before. So um, I will certainly um, pass it on to the product team. Thank you so much. The next one, we have many leaders who have 15 to 30 direct reports, many on shift work with no access to a computer. Doing a one-on-one -on -one means paying them extra for the time. Would you have any thoughts on how to handle so many direct reports and connecting in? Yeah, first of all, my first comment would be um, do a bit of research on spans and layers. I'm not sure what industry you're in. However, that's way too many direct reports for your manager to be effective. They should be spending the majority of their time managing people, not doing tasks. Is there any way you can get that down to 10 direct reports and layer other people? Why does it have to be so flat? And you can do a 15 minute one on one or do them bi weekly with those people. Um, and if they're on shift work, just try to figure out a time where you can do it. Um, could someone do half an hour, let's say at 4 p.m., even though they're doing night shift, but then minus half an hour from the shift that they're doing in the particular week that you do the one on one? It's way too many direct reports, though. Um, that poor manager, <laughs> you've got to fix that. The next one from Trudy. The one-on-one -on -one meeting invitations do not sync with Google Calendar. When will this be possible? That is absolutely on the roadmap. And um, I personally can't wait for it to actually happen. Uh, and it, it is on the roadmap. So it, it's in the works. And Catherine Richards, how long should your one-on-one -on -one be? And how often should you have a one-on-one -on -one if you have a team member that works part-time and has a busy job? So time is crucial. So great question, Catherine. Generally, I schedule them for 45 minutes and then I block out 15 minutes after the one-on-one -on -one for time to focus on, reflect on what we spoke about and make sure I action item anything that I've been asked to action, roadblocks, for example, or help with something. And it doesn't mean I do it during that 15 minutes, but I might schedule time in my calendar over the next few days, follow up on Kate's request around researching a career development path for her, um, follow up on um, Jenny's barrier with um, ex-hiring manager. So I, I put that in my calendar to make sure that I'm following up. If it's a shift worker, I would do it once every two weeks. And again, it can be a 15 minute check in. How are you doing? Um, what can I help with? Do you have feedback for me as a manager on what I can do better? And Fiona, how do you add the one-on-one -on -one template to the coaching menu? Can individuals do their own? So Fiona, you might um, want to reach out to me. You might not be on, you might have to upgrade your plan to be able to have access to the one-on-one -on -one template. It should be under the coaching menu already. So if it's not, um, give support a call. You'll likely um, have to up your plan, but it's not a lot of money to do so. Um, again, one about linking to the calendar. It is in the work. The next one, great content. Thank you. Just curious how you respond to setting up one-on-ones with a manager or supervisor who prefers off the cuff and in the moment rather than schedule times. Again, I'd go back to the burning platform and presenting them with the data around what that regular time does. So it allows your employees to prepare. Um, it allows you to be focused. So you're focusing on their well-being. Also, what I failed to mention is you need to be, as a manager, it's your responsibility to be looking out for clues, whether it's during a one-on-one -on -one or during team meetings or even daily huddles, if someone could not be doing well. Signs are uh, camera off, um, rescheduling one-on-ones, cancelling one-on-ones, not showing up to morning daily um, team huddles. They are massive signs that your employees are struggling in some way, shape or form and could be a retention risk. And that's as simple as um, 
after a daily huddle, for example, picking up um, a Slack video uh, or a Teams video and reaching out to Alex. I noticed your camera was off this morning. Yesterday, you didn't show up to our huddle because you said you weren't feeling well. Is everything okay? What can I do to help? Um, so there's nothing wrong with off the cuff. Um, at Employment Hero, I certainly do it. And I know all of our managers do off the cuff comms on a daily basis through team Slack channels, through Huddle, which is a great way where you don't have to have your camera on, where you're going to solve a problem in five or 10 minutes rather than and going through Slack essays, which we absolutely don't um, subscribe to here at Employment Hero. So you can have all of that great off the cuff things. However, having, as I said, it in your calendar, it's in, it's in your mental mind map as well. So I know when all of my one-on-ones are in my calendar, occasionally I have to reschedule them, but I know to pop in and read someone's one-on-one -on -one template beforehand so that it is all about them and that I am addressing any of their needs and making sure I'm helping them to be as successful as they can be in their role. The next one, in Employment Hero under coaching and creating one-on-ones, it shows user template. How do you create a template? Oh, that's just a drop down where you create your own template, you name it. So it might be, um, for example, I've done one for SDRs and AEs because that's a very different one-on-one -on -one, um, to someone in my team, for example, where I'm talking about budgets, roles open, requisitions, time to hire, et cetera. That's so much more about um, conversion rates. Where, where are you to target? Um, are you entering your data into Salesforce, et cetera? So yes, you can create a template and you can create the exact questions that you want. The next one, we're a small company with little room for upward or sideways mobility. Can you address employees wanting to move from their position, but nothing else is available and keep them motivated? Absolute transparency is key to this. And that is acknowledging that someone is doing really well in their role. Currently, you don't have a role for them to move into. Can they explore a role in a different function? Could you give them a side project or an additional project where they help with a company project on a different function to keep them engaged and make sure they're upskilling themselves so that they are adding to their skills and their experience. Another really big thing is psychological safety around someone saying, I've topped out on my career here and I want to move on. You want your employees to feel safe to tell you that uh, because you can start the succession plan and give them a good exit and hopefully they'll boomerang back, which means they'll go out, get some great experience somewhere else and come back again. And they'll always say great things about your brand and your company. LinkedIn is a really good best practice here. During their induction, they give the stats out that on average, their um, tenure is two years. And they say, during your two years, we will give you everything of us and we expect you to give everything of yourselves. If you decide to leave after two years, we will love you and let you leave and pursue whatever it is you want to pursue. And we would hope to welcome you back one day. So it's just about giving people the safety that, you know, people do move on. Um, it's inevitable and making sure that you make that exit as beautiful as it can be and that you do support people. People talk and it really does impact your, um, your EVP employer uh, value proposition. The next one, could we delete one-on-one -on -one meeting as a staff, especially after that manager left the company? Yes. Um, I'd have to have a quick look and we might ping you afterwards, but it is as easy as going on the side and just pressing delete and it will go away entirely. The next one, what percentage of your week do you spend holding one-on-ones? I'm a part-time manager and all of my staff are part-time. How often should I be doing one-on-ones? If you're all part-time, I would recommend bi-weekly. You don't need to be doing it weekly. Um, the most recent research shows for the most engaged employees, you'd need to have a minimum of six hours in-person time. That could be a combination of one-on-ones, team meetings, social virtuals, just anything that where the manager and the employee is involved. So if you're part-time, let's say 50%, that would equate to three hours a week for the most engaged employees. So look through your calendar and make sure you have at least three hours with your team members, whether, you know, that for me, it's a combination of leadership team meetings, 
uh, coaching sessions, one-on-ones, daily huddles, and every two weeks we do a virtual social trivia, happy hour, whatever it might be. The next one, Haley, can secondary managers view one-on-ones? No, they can't. And we do, we, we did debate that, Haley. Um, one of the reasons is to give the employee and the manager the, the safety that it is confidential between them. Um, if you want to share it, though, with your manager above, you can simply do a screen share or even a screenshot. But I was always recommend that you are completely transparent with your employee and say, Alex, this is a roadblock that I'm going to need to ask Ben to help with. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to share this section of feedback uh, with Ben so that I can give him some context around, um, you know, what direction should I go in to be able to help you. So let them know that you are sharing it because you need to garner that trust and then you can screenshot or, or share screen. Julianne, with the one-on-one, -on -one, it does not seem to outlook. Again, that is absolutely being worked on. And uh, the consistency of that question means I will be taking that straight to our CTO and co-founder. Claire, how much time should you dedicate to a weekly one-on-one, -on -one, one hour? So I say not an hour, mine are generally 45 minutes. You don't have to use all of that time. Sometimes I will have spoken to my 2IC five times a day during the week. So when it comes to her one-on-one, -on -one, um, we might only talk for 25 minutes on some projects, troubleshooting, and then you can either say, call it a day and I'll give you time back or use the rest of the time for a bit of a social catch up. Um, what are you doing on the weekend? What's going really well in your life? What are you really crappy about at the moment? or not feeling great about. So, um, and again, I block out an hour. I schedule the one-on-one -on -one for 45 minutes. Use that 15 minutes after the 45 to just be making sure you're doing any follow-ups. Doesn't have to be actioned, but make sure it's somewhere in your calendar to be actioned at some point. Steve, slide 19 mentioned good or bad feedback. I like to think there is only good feedback. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Steve. Um, I may have used the wrong word there, and I've learned a lot from Kim Scott's book on candid feedback, um, Patty McCord through Powerful, and there are a ton of other resources. And I'd love to just tell a quick story about Kim Scott. So she worked for Google, and I worked for Google, and she worked for Sheryl Sandberg, uh, who at, was at Google at the time, most recently at Facebook as the COO for, I think, about 14 years, and she's just stepped down. So Kim was at Google, and she'd done this presentation to some senior leaders, and she thought she absolutely smashed it. And they left the meeting and Kim turned to Cheryl and said, oh, I'm so relieved. That was great. Oh, really? That was fantastic. And Cheryl just turned around to her and said, Kim, that was terrible. You spoke too fast. You didn't allow for, I just gave Kim all of this feedback. And she said she reflected on that. And it was one of the best moments of her career because she'd never ever been given um, candid feedback and she'd never been given it in real time. And so she wrote a whole book about from then she went down the path of how do I get this whole message around candid feedback out into the world. Cynthia, how soon should we come back to follow up with the person after the one-on-one -on -one session? Depends on um, how burning the um, issue is. So if someone's having a conflict with a peer or a manager, you want to resolve that pretty quickly. That needs to be a priority. If it's something around what's the best um, course for me to go on to develop myself to be more up to speed in workforce planning, you can put it out there and say, I'm super busy, Kate. If you don't mind, I'll get back to you next week with a few recommendations on what course I would recommend you do. And then go back, do your research, put time in your calendar to do the research to make sure you do close the loop. The next one, how do you go about providing feedback to employees on comments you have received from other members in their team and not seeing clearly yourself as a manager? Great question two ways. You can either ask the manager to give the feedback themselves. So set up a one-on-one -on -one with that employee and use the situation behavior impact model. Or you can say, Alex, I need to give you some feedback. While I was not in the room or in the meeting, I have heard from numerous people what occurred during that meeting and the impact of your behavior. So let's talk through it and let's talk about how we're going to solve it and potentially 
you being vulnerable and going back to all the people in that meeting to say, thank you for the feedback. I will be working on the way I behave, act, present, project manage, whatever it might be, because to be that vulnerable means that um, the feedback has been heard. So everyone else knows that you as a manager has taken on that feedback and you've actioned it. Madeline, does Employment Hero have ways to prompt managers to schedule one-on-ones and two for the CEO or HR manager to see all one-on-one -on -one records? We are, Madeline, working on a dashboard. So you might know in the dashboard for OKRs, for example, you can see progress on OKRs, how many have been set up, how many are aligned. You can look at the most recognised employees. You can look at the employees that are recognising the most people. We're working on a dashboard um, to look at the one-on-one ones. No, we do not have something to prompt managers to schedule one-on-ones. What I would recommend you do there is a notification email. So you know how you can do um, automatic notifications? I would do an automatic notification to a manager when someone starts that perhaps on day one or day two, they schedule the one-on-one -on -one and they set up the template and that way you're um, knocking that one on the head by reminding the manager automatically. Craig, if you're having weekly meetings, how long do you usually make them due to limited time yet? So again, mine is 45 minutes. However, some people prefer 30 minutes and it, it's also contingent on your team cadence. If you're having really regular team meetings, daily huddles, you're kind of always keeping your people up to date, you can absolutely make them shorter. Amy, how often do you recommend an HR manager to have a one-on-one -on -one with, is that head of departments? Amy, I would reach out to those head of departments and kind of say, how often do you want to meet? But also make sure if you don't, there, there are some people that will never want to have a regular one-on-one -on -one with someone cross-functionally as in HR. Um, so try and get yourself into their leadership meeting. So part of the leadership team, so you're on top of everything. Um, and um, just make sure you're checking in with them all the time. But if not, throw it in their calendar and just say, we don't have to use this time. I'm just putting a placeholder on Thursday at 1 p.m. for 20 minutes to make sure I'm on top of anything you need. Um, and then you've got here, our one-on-ones tend to be related to project reporting and BAU that needs to move to Trello. Yep, so do it. Empower yourself to do it and ask for forgiveness later. Move all the project stuff to Trello. Introduce a template that's all about the conversation between the employee and the manager with all of that focus being on the employee. The next one, any tips on making the Employment Hero one-on-ones form more accessible? I find it a pain to log on, navigate to the one-on-one -on -one section, go to the employee and add notes when things come up ad hoc during the week. Oh, wow, that's really good feedback. Um, you probably find OneNote easier because you have it open all the time. So I have Employment Hero open in my Chrome browser all day um, so that I can add notes and do whatever I need to do. So my recommendation is just to have it open as part of your daily Chrome pop-up that pops up that it's one, one of the tabs that's open. Cynthia, is there any need for setting any concrete action plan and follow-up session for the person to improve on the behavioural issue? Only if the behavioural issue becomes a performance impediment, um, then you absolutely want to set up a regular time to talk about it. You want to document it in the management notes sections of Employment Hero. If you don't have Employment Hero, make sure you're sending emails or putting notes in their file because it could lead down the path to performance management. Um, thanks, Margot. And Chris, is it possible to sync with Google Meeting Agenda? Again, yes, we're working on that and I will definitely be pinging our co-founder. Um, we are on time and I don't like to go over time. We do have quite a few questions still to go. So I'll work with um, the incredible Sophia and thank you Sophia so much for um, everything you've done to set up today. And we will endeavor to get all of these um, answers out to you along with the deck. So being on time and wanting to make sure I don't impede in any of your other meetings, thank you everybody for attending. I do hope that you get some valuable takeaways from this session. 
Looking forward to seeing you soon. We will send out the slides and the answers to the questions. Have a fantastic afternoon. Bye, everybody.